Brevig Mission, Alaska, 1997. Pathologist Dr. Johan Houghton excavates an indigenous village graveyard, searching for something that has eluded scientists for decades. The cause of the 1918 influenza pandemic, also known as the Spanish flu. Johan Houghton had heard about a town about 80 miles outside of Nome in Alaska called Brevik Mission. And it had had a population of about 80, of which almost all of them had been killed from the 1918 flu. So he got the approval to disinter some of the bodies in the hopes that the permafrost had preserved the flu virus and that they could research it. And he found the corpse of a woman who had been uh, morbidly obese. But it was, in fact, not the permafrost that preserved the virus, but her fat storage. They removed some of that lung tissue. And from that, they were able to then send that to the CDC, where we were able to understand it better sequence the virus, that is, understand the genetic code of that virus. After successfully sequencing the virus that caused the Spanish flu, scientists were finally able to unlock the secrets of the most severe pandemic of the 20th century. So the virus was able to uh, reproduce itself very quickly um, and make the host sick very quickly as well, um, and also very readily passed between people but it was no one sort of magic bullet, I guess, if you will, that made it incredibly powerful. In fact, it was more like a perfect storm of all these different features when put together, created this extremely virulent virus. It was referred to in 1918 as Purple Death. So that was a terrible virus. We were able to recover it, understand it, and then from that, we're able to make diagnostics, treatments, and vaccines that can help prevent that from happening again. However, while thankfully, medical science has developed the technology to protect us from the Spanish flu today, when it first struck in 1918, it quickly spread across the globe, leaving millions dead in its wake. The 1918 virus was much more dangerous, much more virulent than COVID-19. People could die in as little as 12 hours after the first symptoms. In addition, the people who were dying were young. The peak age for death was in the 20s. Children were dying in enormous numbers. So 95% or so of the excess mortality was people younger than 65, exactly the opposite of today. The 1918 virus killed somewhere between 50 and 100 million people. If you adjust for population, that would be the equivalent of 225 to 450 million people today. 